All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. What's up, YouTube? Is it streaming? Here we go. We are live. Everyone, bear with me. Um, trying to get uh, John Perry to join. He may not be able to today. Um, we'll see how that plays out. Um, at first, I thought I was going to have to cancel, and then I think he was going to have to cancel. Um, Ray, I'm actually going to send you an email real quick. Um, because I had planned to do some talking uh, with someone today, and when that gets taken away from me, then I, for some reason I feel a little ill-prepared. Um, so, I don't know. I'm looking for someone to do the YouTube Live with me. And uh, I'm desperately trying to get this figured out as quick as I can. So I am going to send out a bunch of invites to join the Google Hangouts. And maybe somebody will join. Maybe somebody won't. Bear with me real quick because I cannot see the screens. Uh, I am tap dancing around. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, Ray, check your email. I just sent you an invite. Uh, if you would like to join in the video chat, by all means, you're welcome to. Um, what's going on, everyone? It's December the 10th. I apologize about last week. Um, I'm in the middle of doing some work on my house and it bled way over longer than I anticipated. And I thought the same thing was happening tonight. Um, and I was beginning to panic. I did get to a stopping point. Um, a little too much electrical work for me. I've got to call in somebody who knows what they're doing because I don't. And, um, so get that get that underway and taken care of because I'm in a little over my head at this point, but it's going to look awesome when it's all said and done. Alfred, what is going on? How about them dogs? Uh, how about them balls? As a matter of fact, we kind of lifted ourselves out of the grave with, um, with everything that's going on. Uh, is it still going Try Bowman. Let me know if it's still echoing. Uh, I'm using a different microphone, obviously, and I can always unplug this and switch back to the other one if it's an issue. So let me know if you're having some uh, um, issues with this. Uh, what's going on, Casey Turner? How much snow did y'all end up getting, my man? How much snow did y'all end up getting? Um, Charlie, I, man, I apologize. I don't know who's going to... I, I don't know if John Perry is going to be able to make it on this particular show or not. I had to cancel the last minute. Then it turned out I didn't have to cancel. Then he may have had to cancel. So a little bit of pandemonium there going to uh, get get to where we need to be. But I think I think we should be okay. Uh, cat bird feeder with my brain. I should be uh, should be prepared, but I struggle. I still struggle often. Still struggle often. Phil Cagle, I am super fired up about the new coach. Uh, all right. I think uh, Coach Pruitt is going to lead us in the direction we need to be. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm just, I just couldn't be any more excited about coach, coach Pruitt being on board. Turf Nerd, you needed, to get a, you needed to get a haircut. That's interesting because um, you don't have any hair. I hate to drop the bald joke on public like that, but you're bald. So I don't want to hear anything about your haircut. Alfred, I do not have a shirt that isn't plaid. I'm wearing a jacket, and if you look underneath, I'm wearing a plaid shirt underneath. Good try, though. I was the one being a little sneaky there. 
Uh, Telly, we only got about a half inch of snow here. Uh, it was next to nothing. It, it all melted and went away uh, pretty much as quick as it came. So um, no real no real snow here. No real snow. Um, let's see what else is going on here. Uh, right. Yeah, you would have to do it from a from a computer. You could not do it from a um, I guess, I don't know. I honestly don't know the technical sides of how, how this happens. Um, look at that. Casey Turner got seven inches. Wow. Sydney only got about three inches. Payment was clear Saturday morning. Wow, that's that's quite a bit. Mississippi got lots of snow. It's still on the ground. Uh, cat bird feeder, I thought you were further coastal Mississippi. Um, I don't know why I thought that, but I thought you were. Maybe you were around Jackson or something. I can't remember. So anyway, it is December 10th. Um, obviously, everything lawn care related for me is on the downward decline. I have finished all my applications for the year. And this is the time of year. You know, if you don't know, uh, you know, Outdoor Designs is a company. We've got what I do, which is the uh, fertilizer we control. And the other part of our business that's landscaping um our sweet spot tends to deal around drainage work um and hardscaping work um you know retaining walls uh stack rock walls um and so during the winter months i kind of take on some of these special projects and that's where i spend a lot of my time like right now i'm building a bocce ball court um so I've got a little bit of that. I've got a lot of uh, work that I have to do regarding um, my shop, getting my shop cleaned up, set up, you name it, squared away. Because, you know, next year, you know, going into sales season, I've got a lot of things I'm going to be doing. Nothing really different. I'm just going to be doing it at a much larger uh, scale. And so, so a lot of work I've got to do to prep my own personal setups here, my own shop here, uh, to gear up for that. Um, and then also moving into next year, um, you know, we'll be doing the work with the fertilizer business, uh, just to kind of give everybody an update there. Um, we, all I can say is that we're still on track for March to have a uh, product in hand. Now, the final product we may have in hand in March may be a little different than what I initially anticipated. So previously we were expecting to have a blended product that would be a blend of, um, it would be one homogenous product that would be uh, uh, homogenous ammonium sulfate and urea. Homogenous product would be the biochar and um, humic from John Perry. However, <laughs> the way things are kind of shifting right now, what we are going to do is actually have just a straight homogenous product. So. In each prill will be the N, P, K, humic, and biochar. It will be 100% homogenous product. And the reason why we're shifting it that way is that we're playing with formulations now. And it would be no cost difference on our end. And so, therefore, we would like to sell it at a no cost difference to where we would a blended product. And the reason why we want to do that is because I think everybody's on board with a homogenous product delivering superior results because you don't have to worry about prill distribution between the um, the way the, the fertilizer goes out. Each, each prill that lands is going to deliver the same level of nutrients as the next prill next to it. So that way you don't have to worry about it in prill and then a K prill and then a biochar prill. Um, so anyway that's kind of where we stand on that right now pretty pretty exciting um and we're still looking at a march time frame to have product in hand um i don't know if that first round of product will be homogenized or not um however once our plant is 
done with the construction phase. Uh, from that point forward, we are hoping to have just a straight homogenous product line. Um, and then as we go further and further, uh, we hope to have uh, more customizable homogenous uh, product lines. So anyway, there we go. Mom, what's going on? I'm glad you like the microphone. Uh, John Bates, where is your, your brother? Tell your brother to hop on here. Um, as a supplemental application, a hybrid synthetic program, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, the whole purpose of this fertilizer will be to replace a hybrid synthetic program. Um, so with a hybrid synthetic program, you're going to mix your, uh, you know, bio solids or chicken litter with a synthetic fertilizer. It is, is over there in the chat. She, she commented. So I had to, I had to say hey to her. Um, so, you know, instead of using a, a cheap, relatively dead, uh, carbon source that is, is they have like a five to one carbon ratio, like a biosolid or chicken litter. Um, you know, we want to release a product that's going to have like a 13 to one uh, C to N ratio with the, with the biochar. Uh, and then blended, it's going to have about a five to one carbon to nitrogen ratio um, instead of, you know, where if it's blended with... Um, like a biosolid and a synthetic fertilizer, that's going to drop it down to like a two to one or maybe a one and a half to one C to N ratio. N ratio really high. Um, obviously, the, the more carbon we get down to a point, the better off we'll be. And ideally, where we would like to be on the carbon delivery point is going to be in that five to seven pounds of actual viable carbon per thousand square feet per year. Um, so this would not be a supplement to a hybrid synthetic program. Our goal is to completely replace a hybrid synthetic program. Um, I hope that helps, Jeremy. I hope that helps. Um, so I can continue talking about carbon all night. Um, it is, um, it's something I've been studying more and more and more and more and more and more on my off time here. Um, because I really honestly feel like this is going to be the shift. Um, uh, Turf Nerd, it's not actually going to be coated with RGS. It's, it's going to be more of an impreg with RGS. So um, what we're going to do is actually um, we're going to feed it all into the machine as a dry product. And then when we actually start the prilling process, we have to inject liquid into it to help it turn into a ball. When we inject liquid into it, we're going to be injecting RGS. Um, there's some other things that are be, going to be going on kind of behind the scenes with, uh, with, with John Perry that I can't really get a whole lot of this into it. Um, I can't, I can't give a whole lot of the background of it because it's, uh, it's super proprietary information coming from John Perry, um, pr proprietary products coming from John Perry that we will be using. Um, so basically the contents that are going to be available in, um, the contents that are going to be available in a product like RGS or, or part of John Perry's product line we will be homogenizing into our product, um, into our final granular fertilizer. So um, I can't really explain how we do that other than with, with in a very basic part, we're going to be injecting liquid during the prilling process. And really that's how I'm going to be able to leave it. But um, it's much, much more complicated than that. And it's actually going to have a lot more, um, of John Perry's product in it than initially thought. So should be interesting how it all plays out. Uh, Jeremy, I don't know if I'm going to be chatting at Long College or not. I would like to. Uh, we've talked, John Perry and I have talked a little bit about it. Um, so, you know, it may, uh, it, it may end up happening. 
Uh, Turfnerd, yes, for right now, molasses is still in the plan um, because uh, one for odor control and also for um, assisting in prilling and the agronomic benefit of molasses as well. Uh, Herman, yes, it is definitely time for soil testing. If you have not soil tested a property, this is a great time to do it. I will probably be doing some of mine through the month of December and also the month of January. I start back spring the last week of January. So absolutely, if you're looking for something to do to fill this off season, then it is a great, great time for soil testing. Um, if you're doing a full bioassay, um, you, you can get that done now too. Um, and so just, just keep that in mind. Uh, <laughs> my daughter said, Hey daddy to the screen. <laughs> uh, Juan, what's going on, man? Just tuning in. Big fan. I've gone through all your videos like three times. Follow you from Georgia. Where you at in Georgia, Juan? Where you at, man? I used to live in Georgia. Uh, Herman, I don't know where you're at, but the ground is frozen here. The Jameis stat, man, it is not frozen here. We're still in the 40 degrees soil temperature range so um i am uh you know we still got a little we our ground never really freezes here so uh we're fortunate enough to not have to deal with that what kind of rates of rgs compared to applying it in liquid form i went down with six ounces per thousand in liquid all right Char charlie so this is one of the things when john perry and i were talking about developing this product our big conversation always came back to is can this granular product deliver equal or greater results than the liquid products? And the fact of it is, is no, it, it's going to be very close and they will actually complement each other in both liquid and granular form. I can get down the same things that are in RGS in a granular form. However, what I cannot have happen is the foliar uptake of products delivered through RGS. So, when you chelate something with RGS or mix something with RGS, so we'll say urea and RGS, and you apply it foliarly, you're going to get a different uptake through the leaf tissue than you would if you were to take granular uh, RGS and granular urea and apply it, and it's taken up to the roots. Um, it's not going to be a significant difference, but you will get a different uptake foliarly versus through the roots. Um, depending on where you're at in the country, that may be a benefit, that may be a slight uh, deterrence. Um, most super high-end fertility programs are going to be spoon-fed programs where you're, de you're delivering only the nutrients that need to be delivered foliarly um, more frequently rather than going out with a like uh, with a dura duration type product where you apply it and it's going to release in for 77 days and then you know hopefully you get back before the 80 day mark and reapply it and you know it's going to release for another 70 plus days so um, it's going to be it will be very similar in results uh, and it will be going down this product the carbon content in this CW will be something similar at with with one pound of in or three quarters of a pound of in it will be something very similar to ounces of RGS in liquid form um, so it should be similar in terms of rate However, uh, there might be just a slight discrepancy in terms of overall result. Uh, in some instances, the granular may give you a better uh, result. In some instances, the liquid may give you a better result. Um, and one thing that we're going to do testing on our end is finding out what exactly happens when we're using RGS in conjunction with the granular product. So spraying RGS and applying the fertilizer for, um, and but again that's going to be testing further down the line and that's that's going to be some of that that banana stuff we do like uh, like you know again the overall goal of 
these products and these particular programs, the whole goal of carbon-based fertility is to be able to reduce our inputs. And by inputs, I mean of N, P, and K. The more carbon we have in the soil, the more that soil will be able to retain and the more that soil will be able to produce its own nutrient sources. Um, so it, it, it ties into the, the carbon cycling effect of, you know, the, the carbon is going to house uh, microbes and beneficial bacteria and fungi, and that will consume the organic matter, whether that be leaf clippings or whatever, and that will deposit more into the soil. Uh, however, as that organic matter is broken down and, it, in, and releases the end, what you're left over with is a carbon deposit, which in turn leads to more microbes. And so it creates this cycle of soil building, soil building, soil building, soil. Um, and, and, and the goal is to maximize that carbon cycling effect. How about that? I talked myself into a complete circle, and I don't remember where I started, but here I am. Something like that. Something like that. Um, let's see here. Yard's done right. What's up, my man? How are you, sir? I was probably, I mean, will there be any samples there? Yes, Jeremy. Uh, at 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 there. No, not at the law ontology. Uh, there will not be any. Um, will not be at Long College Summit. I have no idea where going it is. I have no idea. Um, the Gandalf of Long Care. I don't know what Gandalf is, but I'll take it. Surface freeze and snow, so I'm staying inside waiting for Sunday, and you bro, I have alarm set on the phone. Let me know when you start. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, do you have any places to buy equipment? I am in search for a triplex. Uh, it's fireplace ash carbon. Uh, Telly, I, man, uh craigslist is your friend i mean that's and that's where i would look i'm actually thinking about getting a triplex mower myself i'm going to go to the um old golf courses and talk to them and see what they can hook me up with um and yes you can use fireplace ash as a carbon source however know that it's going to be relatively low in carbon because it's more ash than actual carbon. Um, so when you think potash, um, ash itself is going to be higher in pH. It's going to have a higher um, uh, K content. Typically, if you take ashes, you're looking at like a 0, 3, 4 uh, analysis if you had 50 pounds of it. Um, and it is going to have carbon in it. It's just not going to be an incredibly high rate of um, of carbon itself. So um, just keep that in mind that, yes, you can use it, but no, it's not necessarily a, a crazy high rate of carbon. Uh, <laughs> Jim, you tell Uncle Tito I said hello. You tell him I said hello. So, you know, it, it, it's kind of interesting where the direction of fertility is going to go in the future. Um, one of the most bizarre things I've learned through this process is learning how fertilizers are made, how much of the fertilizer business is relatively I won't say a scam, it's just, it's a little bit deceiving about what goes into a bag of fertilizer. So, for instance, we will talk about, I'll talk about Screaming Green. Uh, Screaming Green does not actually produce any of their own product. What they do is they have a recipe that they give to different blenders throughout the United States and have these blenders blend their recipe. Screaming Green puts their label and puts the product in their bag and then sells it from that blender. So it's, it's kind of interesting to see how 
they do it. So, you know, Screaming Green isn't developing any of their own product. They're just developing a recipe and then selling it. So, um, thing that the, the recipe itself cost, you know, $20 a bag as a final product. However, you can take that same recipe and take it to a blender like a co-op and have it blended for $13, $14 a bag versus $20 a bag. And it, not to say that what they're doing is wrong, it's just it's interesting to learn how this has gone. Um, so, I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, Alfred, John Perry does not have an idea of the cost. Uh, the coverage should be four bags an acre, something like that. Kind of where we're thinking. Matt Davis, what's going on, man? Hey to you and your family. Uh, so I could use it to raise the pH of my lawn. I have an algae or should I say moss problem in my shady areas. Need to do a soil test ASAP. Test your soil, see what it is. Um, yes, in theory, you could use that to raise the pH in your lawn, ashes. Um, so keep that in mind. However, depending on your source, it can affect your final pH. So just keep that in mind. I did a soil test for the first time this year. pH is around a 7.5. Should I try to bring this down? Um, I wouldn't necessarily work to aggressively try and bring that down. However, I would feel more comfortable using sulfate-derived fertilizers. So, uh, for instance, I would primarily run ammonium sulfate on that yard. Uh, I would primarily use potassium sulfate on that yard. I would stay away from things like... Um, potassium chloride um urea would probably be okay um and at a seven five you'll probably you're probably on the on the just on the cusp there of limited um iron availability so i would probably be supplementing fairly high with iron as well um so actively pursuing to drop it, no, you're going to have a hard time applying enough uh, sulfur to begin with to even, even drop that. Uh, there's very few people that can do that successfully. Ray, the green doctor, could, but acid had extremely high volumes to be able to do that. So just keep that in mind. Um, seven five, you're going to get a, a reduction in your iron uptake. Looks like uh, manganese uptake, boron, copper, and zinc. So, where you would benefit would be a good um, micronutrient supplementation. Um, so, if you can find a good micro package through the course of the year, be sure and use that. Um, I think you'll see a higher performance using those micro packages out of your MP and K. So. Should be good to go there. I received some of my Bermuda lawns with annual rye. Now, since I skipped pre-am and yards during their second mow, what can I do as prevention and post? Um, lawn um, with annual rye. Hmm. Mm hmm. Typically, I would recommend you use perennial rye because it's darker in color. Um, As far as prevention, you're, if, if you're at your second mow, you can go ahead and put down a pre-emergent. You're not going to hurt anything by doing that. And as far as post, anything that's going to be cool season tolerant. So, um, you know, your, uh, you know, your standard three ways, triclopyrs, things like that, that, that will work. Um, if you are using a product like triclopyr that's hard on Bermuda grass, make sure your Bermuda is completely dormant. Uh, if you do still have some green in your Bermuda grass, you may want to stay away from that. Just use like an ester-based 2,4-D product. Alan Thompson, what is going on, sir? How are you? How are you? Have you used Site One as a source for some of your products? Uh, the Jameis stat, I used to use Site One. Um, I do not. I made a commitment to never buy anything from Site One ever again. Have held true to that. The only thing I buy from them is Monument herbicide because my other supplier does not sell Monument. So 
used to buy a lot from Site One, but I do not anymore. Uh, primarily, I buy things through um, a local company called Dickens Turf and Supply. That is um, that is my hookup. The only thing I get from Site One, I take that back. Plants get a lot of plants from Site One. Uh, irrigation products get those from Site One. Um, nothing against them. We had a falling out. So I'm not going to buy anything from them anymore. Woo! Man, I was kind of got off on a, a, a super hardcore tangent there with the um, with the carbon. Uh, real quick, I uh, just kind of want to take a minute. Apologize, everybody. I've been trying to take a break from uh, from social media for a little while. Uh, after. The GIE, I kind of get overwhelmed with everything that's going on. It's the end of aeration overseed season. Uh, it seems like that's when the YouTube channel is at its peak. And um, and I'm just trying to get through the end of it for the rest of the year. So uh, I've been a little distant and in, in just ignoring the YouTube thing for a little while. Um, tackling some of these other projects, this work on the house I've been doing that I keep saying um, that... I've been saying I'm going to knock this wall down for a year and a half, and I'm finally just now doing it. So, um, anyway, now that I'm moving into the off season, um, you know, I, my plan for this winter is to do a lot of whiteboard videos. So, if you want to see anything in particular in a whiteboard video, shoot me an email and recommend what that is. So that way on um, on the days of the week, I mean, that's that's something that doesn't require a lot of setup for me to be able to record, and um, I really, really, really enjoy doing the whiteboard video, so if there's anything that you can want to suggest, um, by all means, um, suggest a way. Have you ever used FAME? Any thoughts on it as a preventative? Uh, Alan, are you talking about the fungicide fame? I don't know of anything else called fame. There may be some bizarre herbicide um, called fame. But fame is a good product that used to be Disarm G. Um, and I'm trying to recall the active ingredient in it. Um, I know it is a strobilurin. Um I'll do a quick Google search here. I want to say it's like trifloxystrobin. Uh, fluoxystrobin. There we go. There we go. What are my thoughts on it? It's a great product. It's a very good product. And it's it's great as a curative and it's great as a uh, preventative. So um, if that's something you have access to for, um, you know, brown patch prevention or um, really a broad spectrum of, of disease control that, that you may need, then fame is going to be a very, very good product. Fluxostrobin, that's what it is. Uh, Tony Tillman, Matt, would you recommend applying RGS with AMS at this stage of the season on fescue lawns? Uh, Tony, I think that would be a great thing to apply right now. Um, um, Let's see, Tony, I believe you're in Nashville, aren't you? Um, I think right now y'all are a little bit uh, warmer than we are. So, um, you know, if you're just a few a few degrees um, ahead of me, then I would I'd go ahead and 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 light it up, man. Put you put you down a half pound of in and and in conjunction with the RGS, yeah, call it call it good, call it good. I uh, was wondering why you went on last week, broke my heart. Yeah, man. I yeah, I, I'm trying to get this get this wall done and and get caught up on my on my my personal life because uh, between between trying to get this wall taken care of and the UT coaching search, I mean my my brain was really out there. Uh, warm season program on the whiteboard one. That's actually a really good idea. Um, I am uh, Chesapeake, Virginia. That's right. That's right. Um. A warm season program on the whiteboard is very doable, very doable. So um, I can do that. Uh, I'm not going to give you the exact warm season program, but I will hit the highlights of when you need to be on the yard, why you need to be on the yard, 
and give you some things to think about what needs to be applied at that time of the year to help you set up for uh, the next time you're at that property. Uh, Philip, if they laid Bermuda side, if you cannot pull it up, by all means, light it up with prodiamine. Um, but I would make sure that you can't pull it up out of the ground. Um, yeah, flu, 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 fluoxystrobin. Fluoxystrobin. Being a strobilurin, it is something that you can combine with a DMI for enhanced uh, spectrum of control. Uh, so, like, for instance, I use the headway which is, uh, well, I roll my own headway, which is going to be a Zoxystrobin and um, Banner Max or Propicanazole, um, and that makes up the same AIs as headway. You can do the same thing with Zoxystrobin. You can run it with Propicanazole as well, and that'll be a good broad spectrum of control because you'll have the Strobilurin effect plus the DMI effect. Um, I believe... Uh, there is some fame that is pre-rolled with tebuconazole, which is another DMI similar to propiconazole. Um, so, yeah, but all, all in all, fame's a good product. It's a good product. I just got the Mississippi Department Private Applicator Certificate for Farm and Homeowner. Look, how about them apples? Good job, cat bird feeder. Good job. Uh, actually, this coming week on the 15th, or yeah, I think it's on the 15th. I have my Department of Agriculture inspection where uh, uh, Tennessee comes in and takes a look at everything and all the paperwork and stuff. Yay. Have you seen any reduction in uh, broadleaf herbicide efficacy when combining with liquid humates? Uh, David, no, nothing that I can specifically attribute to the combination of broadleaf herbicides and humates um and to kind of give you an idea of like one of the first things i did was spray uh, the six ounce rate of rgs with pilex to see what it would look like and i did the one ounce rate of pilex which would be the low rate and it looked identical to a higher rate of pilex so um i don't think because humates are going to exist in the organic acid form, I, they're not going to have that same level of uh, absorptive power that like a biochar would that has not been inoculated. Like a raw biochar would have an issue with reduction in herbicide efficacy. Um, an inoculated biochar would have uh, really no problem on reduction in herbicide efficacy. Um, with liquid humates, um, but nothing that I've seen specific that I would say, you know, uh, that's definitely because I ran it with it. Um, yeah, like, like Jim suggested, test the water pH. Um, because some liquid humates are going to be a relatively high pH, and you know products like uh, uh, like our three ways and stuff, they're going to want uh, an, an uh, acidic uh, solution. So uh, you know four, five, 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 something like that. You know, think like the old Li seven seven thousand um, or Li seven hundred uh, acidifying. The surfactant um, that would get your pH down to like a four and a half or five, and that that would enhance the activity of your herbicide. So, um, one thing to keep in mind. Whiteboard topic: soil test interpretations. Uh, monkey kiss. I I, I did one. <laughs> it's still still not one hundred percent done. Uh, one of the things I, I I left off of that video was talking about percent base saturation and. Basically, percent base saturation in, is a theory. And in my opinion, it is not important. Um, is it wrong? No. It's, it, you, can, you can operate on a percent base saturation, um, but, you know, uh, soil test result. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of bizarre. It's out there. It was developed in the 40s or 50s. The theory is that you have to have certain ratios of like 
you know, P to magnesium or P to manganese or K to manganese or uh, the ions have to exist in certain ratios. And um, anyway, it, it just, uh, it overly complicates things. You need to be at minimum levels and then call it good. Um, this whole ratio business uh, that started in the 40s, it was tested in agriculture. University of Nebraska did the big um, the big test on it where they were using sand-based soils to completely manipulate saturations, and uh, there was no discernible difference between operating on percent-based saturation theory versus minimum requirements for plant success. So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Um, just posted a pH chart on long care pros about half life of herbicides. Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, let's see here. Whiteboard topic on pre emergent for cool season grasses, pros, cons, and longevity. Yeah, Andy, that's a, that's a good idea. Um, one thing, too, that I'll go ahead and comment on is that with pre emergence, it's all going to depend on your region uh, and your soil structure. Uh, soils with higher OM are not going to have uh, pre-emergent duration that a tightly compacted, high clay content soil will. And the reason being is that the lack of porosity in a clay soil is going to help hold on to that longer. Uh, think of it in a CEC standpoint. Clay soils are going to have higher CECs. Um, they have those ability, uh, the ability to hang on to those things. So, um, just kind of throw that out there as a, as a prereq. Prereq. Um, and the other thing too, as we are in this winter time, one thing to keep in mind: everybody that's got Kentucky bluegrass that has not "quote unquote" winterized their lawn, please do not use a traditional winterizer fertilizer. Traditional winterizer fertilizers are going to have a high potassium ratio, high potassium content. So when you buy a winterizer fertilizer, it is going to have like a, we'll say like a 24 and you're buying it at a Home Depot and it's in the, it's got all over it. Perfect for winterizing your turf grass. Typically, from a marketing perspective, when they call something a winterizer, that means it is high in potassium. Um, there was a great study that came out of Rutgers, maybe Purdue. I can't remember. Um, I believe his name was Dr. Rossi, maybe Dr. Martin, maybe Dr. Martin Rossi. I can't remember. But... His study was performance of Kentucky bluegrass with high supplementation of K in the wintertime. And guess what? Higher instances of snow mold on Kentucky bluegrass when heavily supplemented with K in the fall leading into winter. So do not use a traditional winterizer high K content fertilizer for your Kentucky bluegrass. Um for you guys that are able to grow Kentucky bluegrass. Now, on the converse, if you have a uh, warm season lawn, if you're running centipede or Bermuda grass or um, uh, Zorgia grass, St. Augustine, and your lawn is not completely dormant and you want to give it a little extra oomph leading into the cold period, you can run high K on it. So uh, it, interestingly, K has more of an effect on snow mold development, more so than uh, winter kill, which uh, warm season lawns would be subjected to. So keep that in mind. Do I use WDG with my permagreen? Yes, sir. Any luck? Great luck good stuff. I prefer to use the liquid um, prodiamine, uh, but I have used the WDG. I feel like I get more caking with the WDG. I mix it in my skid sprayer and then fill my permagreen out of my skid. So that's how I how I operate it. 
that's how I operate it. Um, so stay away from that. Let's see here. There's a couple other things that seem like I wanted to talk about. Um, for those of you that are looking for equipment going into next year, or you're thinking about starting your own business. Um, this is what I will recommend to you. Get a skid sprayer. Get a skid sprayer. Skid sprayer is the most important part of the, um, of fart and squirt. Uh, you got to have something to be able to spray. So start with a skid sprayer. Then from that point, you can up, upgrade to things like, uh, your ride on spreaders and sprayers and stuff. But nothing replaces having that backpack spreader and a tank sprayer to get started with. Um, you can do so much work with that. So for guys that have been emailing me asking about startup equipment, um, I would start with a tank sprayer and a, uh, a backpack and a push spreader. And that's how to get going. That's exactly how to get going. Um, let's see here. Have you seen less burn potential by using RGS with liquid fur? Uh, Jacob, no. Uh, it's gonna. The beautiful thing about having RGS is that you don't have to run as high a rate of fur. So, uh, if you're running RGS with fur to the point where um, you're even risking getting burned, chances are you're doing it wrong. But with RGS, the whole premise is that you can drop your inputs. You can drop your NPK rate. So if you're using RGS, instead of running a half pound of N, you know, drop it to three-eighths of a pound. Or instead of running a full pound of N, drop it to three quarters of a pound or a half pound, something like that. Uh, Pete has some nice equipment for sale on, on his site. That's right. Pete Denny, uh, GCI Turf, he's got all kinds of stuff for sale. So and check his stuff out and that's one thing if you're looking to break into the the industry he's got the stuff to get it done so keep that in mind uh can you tell the difference between the 16 and 17 pg as far as handling on the hills alfred i can't remember if i've got i think i've got a 15 and a 16. um i i don't know maybe i have a 16 and a 17. i've got one that has wheel weights and then i have one that does not have wheel weights Mine that has wheel weights handles much, much, much better than mine without wheel weights. Um, in fact, I feel so spoiled that when I get on my machine without wheel weights, I'm like, oh, man, I'm definitely running my other, my, my other machine. Uh, yeah, I love the one with wheel weights. Super love it. I love my 16, too. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's just the wheel weights make that much of a difference. It's crazy. I am faster on and off lawns, I would say, by about 30 minutes through the course of the day. Um, so if I'm working an eight-hour day, what usually took me took me eight hours, I'm getting done in seven and a half hours uh, on my PG with the wheel weights. Cage on my 36Z spray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Hey, uh, Turf Nerd, I love to weld. Um, I learned how to weld on YouTube. So if you need to bring something down my way, by all means, bring it to me. We will weld you a roll cage. You will have the first 36Z spray with a, uh, with a roll cage. And uh, who knows? You may, you may have such an industry impact that it becomes a thing. Uh, I've heard... I've heard stories about people on their 36 inch C sprays. <coughs> Jim Beverage. Um, all right, y'all. It is 756. Um, it's about time. I've got to put my kids to bed. I gotta get ready for a big day tomorrow building the bocce ball court. Um, so I gotta take care of all that. But thank you everybody for tuning in. Sorry for the little break I took I took. Uh, I will be picking things up this week with the whiteboard videos. Um, I've got the majority of the work done here at my house that I needed to get done. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for putting up with my little break. And uh, I will be back and we'll be doing some whiteboard videos. Uh, I will start 
with the whiteboard videos talking about pre-emergence and then I will move into um, our warm season grasses, uh, developing a warm season program. I will go back through a cool season program on a whiteboard video and anything else anybody thinks of, feel free, shoot me an email. I'd love to talk about it. Um, oh, real quick, why well, I got a 50 gal, let's go for 750 will be my first year doing first squirt. Need to know how to take care of it as in maintenance and do's and don'ts. One, shoot me an email real quick. Uh, and actually I could do a video about that because I just winterized my equipment the other day. Well, again, thank you for everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate it. Y'all have a good evening. Take it easy.